Hello, Mass 7 students. Uh, today is a practice day, creating scale copies and scale factor practice. So I'm just going to go over just a couple of problems, and then the rest of this lesson is going to be practice for you. Uh, the first one I'm going to go over is number one. We have this grid, and I want you to draw a scaled copy of this polygon using a scale factor of two. And then part B, we'll repeat that using a scale factor of one half. Okay, the first one, draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using scale factor two. What does that even mean? What does scale factor of two actually mean? Max. Yeah, times everything by two. Uh, so I need to know what the lengths are originally so I can multiply those lengths by two. So I'm gonna just color code and mark a few things. How long is this piece right here? Two. How long is this piece here? And how about this piece? One, how about this piece? Oh, I switched it up. This one and this one. I'm just trying to keep all the color coding. All the sides that are length one, I did in orange. How about this piece right here? One, two, three, four, five, and six. This piece here is four. And my final piece here is two again. Great. Now you said scale factor of two means we multiply everything by two. So what is two multiplied by two? And what is that going to mean? I have that it's four, but what am I going to do with that? Uh, Sage. Yeah, that side length is going to be four. So for A, this part that I'm going up to, I'm now going to go up. Let me try that again. Up one, two, three, and four. All right, side length of three. I'm looking at this green piece here. The side length of three, double that. I have a length of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. While I'm doing this, I think I might start labeling these pieces. So three was doubled to be six, two was doubled to be four. I'm going to take care of all of my ones. This is a one. One doubled is two. So that's going to be a length of one and two. While I'm at it, I'll take care of these ones. This was a length of one and this was a length of one. So this is going to be one times two is two and one times two is nearly done now and again I'm just marking these as I go so that I can see that these parts down here correspond to these parts up here color coding to show that now this is a length of six six doubled is going to be 12 that's going to be a lot right all right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 and 12. Probably worth double checking just to make sure I didn't miscount because I don't want the whole thing to be messed up because I miscounted. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Fantastic. And now I have that side length of 2 again. 2 doubled is 4. So I'm going to draw down 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the last piece, 4 doubled. Now I should just be able to connect these pieces, but let's double check to make sure it's going to be the right length. 4 doubled is 8. 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Now, pretty easy. It's only slightly more challenging on the next one. Remember that you have your calculators as a tool, so you can always use your calculator whenever you need to know what the lengths are. If on the first one, the scale factor was two, and that means I multiplied all the lengths by two, and now I'm saying the scale factor is one half, what am I going to be multiplying all of the lengths by? One half. So calculators are going to help us here. Some of it can be mental math, but for those who don't know that mental math, you can use your calculator to help you out. Here's my original is two. So if I wanna draw this, two times one half is equal to one. So this new piece is going to have a length of one. And now it gets to be fun because three multiplied by one half, calculators if you need it. What is three multiplied by one half? One and a half, exactly. So how long am I supposed to draw that piece? One and a half. So it's not going to end here, even though that's the where the grid lines meet. I have to go an extra half. Which that was not done very straight and it's gonna make me crazy, so I'm gonna fix that. One and a half. So although it's not going to be nice and neat on grid lines, it still is completely and totally possible. This next piece here is one, and these pieces here are one, and one multiplied by one half is equal to 
one half. So each of those is only going to be half of a grid square. So instead of going up one, I'm going to go up a half. And here, instead of going over one, now I'm going to go over a half. And instead of going up one, I'm going to go up a half. So the challenging part on this is really just trying to make it as precise as possible, even though they don't end up on those grid lines. <clears throat> 6, half of 6, so again I'm just multiplying all pieces by half, so 6 times 1 half is equal to, calculators if you need it, we know that that's just the same as dividing by 2, so that's 3. 6 times 1 half is 3, so I'm going to go over, let's just count, 1, 2, and 3. So since I started in the middle, that means I end in the middle for 1, end in the middle again for 2, and end in the middle again for 3. <clears throat> I already know that 2 times 1 half is 1, so now I'm going to go down 1, and once again, I started in the middle, so if I wanted to go one full unit, I'm going to have to end up in the middle again. <clears throat> and 4 multiplied by 1 half is equal to 2, so over half to half, and half to half, and there we go. So challenging only because we're kind of in the middle of the boxes instead of on the grid lines, but it still is that scaled copy that's half the size. All right, let's take a look at number two. The next type of problem you're going to see in this uh, in this lesson is finding out what the scale factors are. So, you have a question? Okay, what's your question, Bridger? You're jumping a little bit ahead. We'll get there in just a second. I'm going to lead into this, and then, then I'll let you answer. So these figures are scaled copies, and I'm asking what is the scale factor. I'm asking two questions. The first one is if A is the original and I'm going to B, how is it changing? What is the scale factor? The next question is what if I reverse it and start at B and then go to figure A? So Bridger, you've already made the claim that it's one half. Can you tell me how you, how you got that? Okay, so that has a length of 4, and this has a length of 2. Great. Awesome. Um, so since we know that these are scaled copies, I don't have to take the time to compare every single measurement. If I was wondering if they are scaled copies, I would. But since all I need to know is just what's a scale factor, I think what you've done here is enough. So how does a 4 change to a 2? Some of you might know how to do that in your head, and that's great. How does a 4 change to a 2? How does a 6 change to a 3? Those are questions that we should be asking when I'm asking what is the scale factor. Now, Bridget already told us that it's 1 half but I want us to show how we can get there when it's not quite so obvious, okay? So eyes on the screen. How does a six change to a three? One way that you probably recognize is we can divide by two. However, since scale factor is the number that we multiply by, finding the number we divide by isn't quite the right way to answer. So this is when we would make that connection that when I divide by two, I always draw my pie here, if I have a pie and I divide that pie into two pieces, how big are each of these pieces? They're a half. So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. But I want to show another way, which is also going to be helpful for when maybe I don't know how to get there. You've heard me say this before. If we don't know how to go forwards, what can I do? Work backwards and divide. And I'm going to write that down. If you have space down below, I would encourage you to write it as well. If we don't know how to go forwards, work backwards and divide. So if I don't know how to go forwards with multiplication, I'm going to work backwards and divide. And since I'm working backwards, that means I would start at 3. And 3, going backwards, 
divided by 6. So 3 divided by 6. And when we type that into our calculators, it says 3 divided by 6 is equal to 1 half. Just like we showed using another strategy, but this is a great way for any time the numbers are not nice and don't play nicely, you can always work backwards and divide. So from A to B is 1 half. That's great. Now, what if I'm going in the other direction? What if I'm going from B to A? How does a 3 change to a 6 or a 2 change to a 4? Again, that's a mental math problem for a lot of you, right? So 3 times, go ahead and shout it out, 2. 3 times 2 is equal to 6, so I know that the scale factor is 2. But one more time, eyes on the screen before you start working ahead of me. Thank you for your attention. We already found that going forwards, we're multiplying by 1 half. And we talked about when I reverse this, all I do is I multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal is that big fancy word for flip the fraction. So if going forwards, I multiply by 1 half, then going backwards, I would multiply by 2 over 1, or simply 2. So those are some strategies that are going to help you as you work on the rest of this packet. And the rest of this packet is just going to be practice. So there's only going to be one other problem done on this video. We'll go over it in a second, but I want you to try the packet on your own for practice first. Pause the recording as you finish up the packet. The only one that I really wanted to go over is this one here, number three. So let's make sure that we've all done it correctly. Here is the unlabeled polygon along with its scale copies A, B, C, and D. We need to find the scale factor for each one. Now, again, these are already scaled copies. I know that they're scaled copies, so that allows me to focus on just one piece. Like this length right here is a length of two. If I wanted to focus on others, then I certainly can. I would maybe focus on the whole entire width of the figure, which is three. And paying attention to those uh, links as we go through these problems is gonna be helpful. The scale factor to create A. So how is this going to here? Here's the length of one. How does a two change to a one? We already asked that question on the previous problem. So hopefully that one comes pretty quickly. How does a two change to a one? Dean, how does a two change to a one? We multiply by one half. We've already, we've already seen that. Uh, how about on the next one going from this unlabeled figure to figure B? That has a length of four. How does a two change to a four, Aaron? Multiply by two, so that's a scale factor of two. Now it does get to be a little bit more challenging. C has a length of three. How does a two change to a three? Sage, what is it? Did you say one half? Not quite. One and a half is right. Multiply by one and a half. And that may have been challenging, so let's talk about how can we find out if we don't know. We've talked about some strategies. If I don't know how to go forwards, I can work backwards. And as I work backwards, I am going to divide. So I'm going to start at three because that's the end of the problem. And I am dividing by two. And I can type that into my calculator. You can do that now if you didn't do it before. Three divided by two in my calculator is equal to three halves. Now fractions are friends. So I prefer three halves because if I ever asked, what is it if I go in reverse, all I have to do is flip this to its reciprocal. So 1.5 or the fraction three halves. Okay, uh, what is the scale factor as I go from the original unlabeled to D? How does a two change to a two? What is that going to be? Bridger, multiply by one. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So the scale factor is 1. Then we keep on going. It's where it gets even more challenging. What if C is the original and C is scaled all the way down to A? So now my 3 is changing to a 1. My 3 is changing to a 1. This is going to be something similar to what we did over here. Remember how I... I recognize that a three can change to a one 
maybe by dividing by three. So I drew my picture, kind of like I did here. So I'm gonna do that now. How does a three change to a one? I know that it can be dividing by three. So I might draw my pie to show a circle being split evenly into three pieces. We're dividing by three. And what are these pieces called when I split into three? Thirds. This is one out of three or one third. I also, if I don't know how to work forwards, I can also work backwards and divide and type in one divided by three. And when you type in one divided by three into your calculator, guess what it's going to tell you? One third. Uh, what is the scale factor if B is the original and I go all the way down to A? So now I'm asking how does a four change to a one? How does a four change to a one? That's a tough one. I'm going to approach this one differently. What if I worked backwards? Do you know how a one can change to a four? Tucker, how does a one change to a four? No. How does a one change to a four? No, one times one is going to be one. How do I change a one to a four? There we go. One times four is four. So if I go backwards, I'm multiplying by four. So if I'm going to reverse it, we saw this on our last problem. If I'm going to reverse it, that means I multiply by the reciprocal. So if I know that going this way, I multiply by four, then going this way, it is going to be the reciprocal of four. But that means I need to write this as a fraction and four is equal to four over one. So when I flip it to its reciprocal, that is going to be one fourth. So what is the scale factor? We're multiplying by one fourth. Okay, the rest are practice and I will not be uh, covering them in the video. There will be an answer key posted in Canvas for you to check your answers. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.